Good morning. Welcome to Get Him On Side. We're, it's actually, we've, we've got special guests. I mean, we're, we're really stepping up in the world. And have a look at this. Good morning to you, Joel Kane. Dan, can we change the name from Get Him On Side to Get Him Inside? Oh, it's unbelievable. Yeah. <laughs> it's unbelievable. Have a go at this, will you? <laughs> Seriously. Uh, like, who is he's this He's never bloke? coming home. He's got his own television screen now. Look at him. It actually Richard looks Reed. good. It actually looks good. Richard for, Ray, darling. <laughs> for those watching the, uh, the video... Um, he looks like he, he's on the big screen in his uh, Victorian home. He looks like he actually fits in with us here. <laughs> well, it's good to virtually be here, guys. Um, this is this is very professional here. We've got the microphone set up, the big screen. It's it's all happening. Uh, Taking pa- it to another level. Are you part of one of these 10 communities that won't get tested down there? No, no. I was safely, safely down in the country, down in Warrigal. Which, uh, as you pointed out before, Dan is famous for the for the Warrigal dog track. So, as many of our listeners would know, I'm sure. I'm one of the uh, typical Australians, Joel, that only knows certain towns by whether they have a racetrack, a trot, Ararat trot track, Strathalbyn. <laughs> Strathalbyn. Do they still race there? But you, but you know it for the track only. Yeah, don't they you? know it for the track. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Terang, uh, Mandra. <laughs> Everyone knows Mandra. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to get this off my chest. It's not a Bambi. Can people, can we stop getting on to Cam Smith every time he does something nice? He, he, he delivers a nice speech with Craig Bellamy and Ryan Hoffman yep. with the permission of the Warriors, with the permission of Roger Chilvasa Sheck. They make a nice speech to the Warriors after pantsing them 50 to 6 and, every, and people rip in. I don't know who did it, but I don't know who actually decided that that was condescending, but Cam and had to defend himself. And yeah. I mean, what? I mean, the bloke, okay, the bloke does work the referees over. I get that, okay? Yep. He is a genius at working the refs over and, and manipulating the rules to his advantage. <laughs> but he is the greatest winner this game has ever seen. Can we actually appreciate him? Yep. So I just, I, it, it just annoys me now that just anything he does, we just want to hate on. I dare the He's Broncos. another victim of the, or the latest victim of the of the cameras in the sheds after the game. We saw what Latrell went through a couple of weeks ago. Have to, or Wayne had to defend himself. And I think it's about time we just turn the cameras off. Actually, after the game, let the. Uh, let Gee, the it's funny. One organisation, Sean, was quite happy to uh, run that story. But then the, the next week, when Latrell Mitchell went off the field, they were very happy to zoom in on Latrell, hoping for some tears. But anyway, mm. uh, we move on. <laughs> Uh, that, is that a Bambi? <laughs> hey? Is that a Bambi? Black. Well, you brought it up. That's it's it's a it's a drive-by Bambi. Can what? I make things a little bit more positive here? And I, 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 it was my cuddle Bambi last week, right? Yes. Peter Valandis, or as I like to call him, Captain Clarity, right? Captain Clarity, <laughs> and he's done it again, Dan. He's done it again. He, he's ahead of the curve yep. at every interval, right? So. The coaches have just started to work out these set restarts. By the way, there's been 233 in the last four weeks, I think, you'll find. So it's raining set restarts, which I actually love. Yeah, 10 a game. Yep, that's right. 10 a game. There you go. Uh, but now there's been an addition to that where, if not square, so they're jumping out. So whilst they've cleaned up the ruck, if not square, the markers, set restart. Yep. Set restart. Captain Clarity out again. Love it. That's it. exactly it. So uh, there we go. That, that's an anti-Bambi. Uh, what about you, Sean? What's got your uh, attention in league this week? No, not full Bambi. We'll get to our Bambis later on, I think. But um, Johnny Bateman's come out and said that he is after a release now from the Raiders, and I think he's he looks like a bit of a shit bloke to me. The after he the way the way he carried on <laughs> yep. a month ago, saying that he hadn't asked for a release or he maybe only asked for three releases instead of four or whatever it was, and now. All of a sudden, the story looks pretty good. So, you know, they're usually pretty good blokes up there from the north of England, but I'm not so sure about old Johnny Bonnie Miles. Yeah. Sort of got my, got my back up a little bit. Hey, by the way, um, is the Raiders any part at fault of this? Like, the terms in the contract have allowed this to happen, hasn't it? Yeah, and they're blowing up that they had to pay a one off transfer fee of right. 600000 and yet they only got one year of Bateman for that. 600,000. Yeah, but why is he being allowed to be shopped around in the first place? If he if he's locked into a contract without any outs, which I don't know if that's the case. I don't know if he has outs. I think they've just let him... Right. I th- now, 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 here's what I understand. This is a very weird contract that he is allowed to talk to other clubs but not necessarily leave. It would still need the imprimatur of Canberra. I don't get that aspect of the contract. They handled it well, Canberra. It was, He'll it was, never play for them again. No, but it was very, never play a game again. No, he's wow. done. I think he's done. Wow. 
Ricky's dirty on him, mate. Yeah. Make no mistake. Ricky, well, he's more dirty on the manager. But, uh, well, Bateman's out for a few months anyway, so. Yeah, okay. But it could upset the like Ricky to hold a grudge. <laughs> I, don't, I, I like the old Ricky more. The new fun-loving um, uh, Ricky uh, is a lovely man. I prefer the angry Ricky much you better. You don't like the sculling of beer, Ricky? <laughs> I lo- no, no, no. I like the current day great, you know, champion bloke sort of uh, mellow Ricky. Yeah. Mellow or Ricky. Yeah, yeah. Kicking chairs, Ricky. I'd love to my, have a beer my, with my that, favorite Ricky. Rickies. But 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 <laughs> as a chair, as Ricky. a media person, angry, get fined ten thousand dollars every second week, Ricky, <laughs> is much more fun. Uh, yeah, better, Ricky. You ever copped a Ricky spray? Uh no, but I I, I, do, <laughs> I was calling a game right uh, for Fox, and yes. Kevy Walters was, was my assistant, and Ricky and Jimmy Smith had had a falling out, yeah. right? And Jimmy the Smith this day was on the sideline. Yeah. So myself and Kevy, knowing that Jimmy Smith and uh, Ricky had had this big falling out, <laughs> one of the Raiders players had been injured. So I said, and Ricky was sitting on the touchline, so I said, uh, well, Kevy, we might get Jimmy Smith to go and ask Ricky what the problem with uh, blah, blah, blah is. <laughs> so Jimmy Smith, too smart, went over, not to ask Ricky, but to ask John Bonacera, who at the time was the footy manager. Yes. And so he's, he's asking John Bonacera, who's kindly giving him the information which we need. Yep. And Ricky catches uh, Jimmy speaking to John Bonacera <laughs> and just teed off. Abs- <laughs> what are you talking him for? Oh, bang, 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 bang. <laughs> Kicking chair, Ricky came out. Yeah. Uh, it was beautiful to watch. Kevy was rolling around on the floor laughing yeah. his head off. It was wonderful, 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 wonderful. All right. Uh, it's time. Now, I'm, I'm going to take a mild break from this. I, I can't replicate last week's efforts. I don't mean to disappoint you, but after ripping apart about six people, <laughs> Joel, I'm going to let you open the batting on shooting Bambi for this week. No problem, Dan. Uh, mine is one topic, but a three-prong attack. I'm shooting Bambi, and, and, and maybe not so much Bambi, because you could hardly call some of these people Bambi, but I am shooting the fact that I'm shooting social media outlets, mm. Instagrams, Facebooks, etc. Yes. There's been alleged death threats towards the Broncos, right? Really? Alleged death threats via social media to the Broncos. Now, this is football, people. It's not uh, get serious. Get a life. Get a life, exactly. But where I'm coming to here, Dan, and, and I think the, the governing bodies and the governing heads should get together. It's a whole new world, social media. At what point do we not make it compulsory for you to have any form of social media account that you must get verified? Uh, because you know what? So many people are being preyed upon. Children, uh, people are being harassed in all parts of the world. Celebrities, sports people. Let's make it compulsory across the world in social media that people must be verified. So that's part one, mm-hmm. right? Part two is the buffoons who hide behind fictitious accounts who at the moment don't need to be verified. Have you been trolled this week? No, but uh, I get trolled every week, Dan. (laughs) But what I'm saying is, for these people, who are these people? They hide behind fake accounts, throwing their little stones, when we know behind those little phones, they're they're, they're pathetic people, right? So that's number two. Usually fat. Yeah. And, And what I love is the ones that put their kids out in front. But yet they're trolling Erin Molan, like they're calling her a yeah. whatever. And uh, but yet you know they're putting their kids in the centre. What, what a great example you are! But if you go through their feed, right? If you want to feel better about yourself, you're being trolled by these people. Go through their feed, and it's all negative. That, that, that's that's the hopeless type of person you're dealing with, right? The Joel, th- we've been through this. No, but the third person I'm actually going to shoot <laughs> shoot Bambi is the recipients of this. If you're getting affected by an anonymous person with a fictitious account. Forget about it. Well, that's Sean's generation. Well, don't worry that's about his, it. That's, uh, what are you, Gen Z, or what's your generation, Sean? Oh, I've, I've lost count. Don't what, be what precious that, about so. it. it. Unless it's a real person there, treat them as if they're not a real person. Who cares? So I'm teeing off, with, firstly, the social media institutions who don't verify accounts. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm teeing off on the pork chop maniacs who hide behind fictitious accounts. Yes. And I'm teeing off on the people who get offended by such said Fictitious accounts. Wow. You've just gone everyone. Very angry. Well, <laughs> what, what's happened this week, Joel? These, what these happened early, to you? These early mornings are getting to you. What happened? Yeah. Only, it, no, no, no. it only took two weeks <laughs> no, and, and you've become bitter. <laughs> no, the Broncos are firing up. Broncos, don't worry about it. They're hollow threats in my opinion, right? Likely. Likely hollow threats. Did you see the very funny... I didn't realise that was real, the death threat thing. I saw a tweet from Chris Walker. 
Right. Referring yeah, to death yeah. threats and said, I cop death threats when don't worry about it. And then Kevin Campy had said, Yeah, those death threats came from your teammates, <laughs> champion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. All right. Well, good start. Uh, Sean Omeron, fire away. Jeez. Give us a Bambi. I'm not sure if I can follow it after that. I'm not as angry as Joel today, but I just want to call out a couple or a small portion of society that really pissed me off uh, <laughs> two weeks. In a, in a row now. Do they wear light? Went down to the local cafe on, on Saturday. <laughs> no, they, well, they might actually. Um, went down to the local cafe, they hoping to catch up with a mate for a coffee. Took the dog down there, walked up to the to the bloke at the cafe and tried to get a table out the front, but it was full. I said, no worries, I'll, uh, I'll stand here and wait. 10, 15, 20 minutes went by. There's one bloke sitting there. There yeah. wasn't a flat white or a poached egg inside. <laughs> yeah. he, sat, he sat there. Doing yeah. a crossword. Yeah. He finished the crossword, started on the paper, back to front. I was there for half an hour. <laughs> well, just, if you want to do that, go to a park bench, all right? Yeah. If you want to sit there, buy something, eat yeah. something, drink something. That yeah. really, two weeks in a row, caught me as well. Did you confront him or are you just uh, hoping no, I'd that rather... he's one of the 25,000 that <laughs> listen to this? I'd rather just hide behind the microphone, Dan, and pot him from afar. See, no, I, I, I am guilty of this only to this extent. Um, I like on a Saturday morning doing my stats and preparing for the game and call at the cafe. It's just yeah. nice atmosphere. But I will make sure I'm at the bar because I'm yep. on my own. Uh, is that an acceptable if, – if I'm there for an hour just sipping on a coffee, breakfast long gone, if I'm just at the bar, are we accepting this as – I'll cop. I'll cop the bar, but he was at a table out the front. There was four chairs around him doing nothing. But I th- just buy something, all right? Have your coffee and your breakfast at the start, and then would it kill you to order another four dollar fifty flat white just to <laughs> yeah. you know make a small donation to the cafe just so you can have that? that well, image. that's that's who I'd feel sorry for, not you, Sean, but the cafe because they're the ones that have, exactly uh, they've they've done it tough. Although some people tell me. They've actually done better big, uh, out of these last three months, amazingly, because all their employees have been on job cut, but they've kept open as a takeaway establishment, yeah. so they've made a little bit of money, right. and yet they've had to pay no employee payments. We're in for a big couple of months, by the way, when JobKeeper comes off. Oh, yeah. Ooh, it's, that's going to be... This is going to be an ugly time yeah. in this country when uh, when that's when it really is going to... We're just, we're just pushing, the, pushing the excrement... Can I have another? For, oh, he's going to go <laughs> no, again. I, I just want to go another little one, right? Oh. Now, Anthony Seabold has been under immense pressure, mm. right? Firstly, it was Kevin Walters who can't leave the bubble or get back out of the bubble or something to do with the bubble. Stephen Kearney has been the man linked to the Broncos, right? And and there'll be a lot of pressure. If, if Anthony Seabold was to decline Stephen Kearney's assistant coach, he'd cop it, right? The Broncos have conceded over 200 points. So defence is a major, major problem for the Brisbane Broncos, right? Stephen Kearney has just been wrestled from the Warriors, yes. right? They're, you called them last weekend. Yes. If you get in there, half your score. So defence has not really been, uh, in Stephen Kearney's tenure, their major hallmark, no. right? So why should Stephen Kearney be pressured into... Sorry, Anthony Seabold... Yep be pressured into taking on Stephen Kearney. They don't know what they're doing. That is simply a PR exercise. Hey, we're on top of this, everyone. We're bringing in someone else. I don't understand that. I, I, and and he, he's damned if he does and damned if he doesn't. Isn't he Seabold? Look, what... The, the pressure that Chris Johns heaped upon him by ringing Kevy Walters. Do you ring Kevy Walters? Do you not ring Kevy Walters? And in the end, Kevy can't do it anyway. But, well, you, the but you're putting Kevy in a no-win situation, so you're going uh, to you're going to get him to help the guy who beat him out for the job, and it was a sham interview process anyway. Look, mm. that club has got so much to answer for. Poor Seabold is copying. Well, it's not his fault they offered him a five-year deal mm. with a one-year option at ridiculous money. And he was basically a half-season first-grade coach at that point yeah. who talked up a good game. He might be a very good I, coach. I rate him. I, I personally no, do I rate don't, him. No, I'm not disagreeing. He's got to improve at his press conferences. He is the worst I've ever seen at a press conference because he's too honest and he's too emotional. Mm. And I, you imagine if uh, you think of all the, the greats in a press conference when they've lost four, five in a row, they divert. Yep. They find a diversion. The Phil Goulds, the... Bob Fultons, the um, Wayne Bennetts, they would have smashed a referee by now. They would have, <laughs> they would have found some other issue in a game mm. where it would have taken the attention away. But Sebes, he, 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 
I think he honestly needs – they need to pay, whether it's a Bob Fulton or a Phil Gould or a Kevin Sheedy or a Mick Malthouse, a consultancy fee, and teach this bloke how to conduct a press conference because I think people can smell weakness – and when they smell weakness, they go in for the kill. I and I think that's that. what the Brisbane media is doing because they sense weakness here. And he's failing at the moment. They're two and five. Has he stopped wearing that gold blazer yet either? He's not doing himself oh, any favours role, role on that thing. Yet. I mean, <laughs> come on. That would be my first. You can hire me as a consultant. Take that <laughs> but you know he's blazer fi- off. You know he's clear. 52% as a coach. It's so not bad. Still- yeah, the other thing is too that, you know, uh, Anthony Milford, uh, million-dollar player, Darius Boyd, close to similar, and Jack Bird. So you could argue that he's operating without a third of his cap. Correct. You know, Fafita hasn't been playing. They were two from two to start the season. We have spoken about the fact they've got no leaders. Um, Hasn't Wayne Bennett just teed off at the old... (laughs) Wayne Bennett, people forget, he orchestrated to get sacked. Okay, so he can get two paychecks at once. He was desperate to get booted out of Brisbane so he could go to South a year early, so he he can get start being star paid by South, I put my teeth back in, in 2019, and he wasn't going to quit Brisbane. No, no, no. He'll let them sack him so they can wear the responsibility. Oh, and there's about $800 to a million dollars of uh, uh, employment money that is owed to him as well. He's so Wayne did, be- Wayne, Wayne. Wayne did benefit. F- uh, uh, Wayne is too smart. He's played it beautifully. And just I'll, and there's a man that can sense weakness. Just sense that Seabold oh, is at yeah. his lowest point, so he's just gone, right, this is the week I'm going to... I'm gonna, and, and, and that's the genius of Wayne is he, he knows which journalists are in his pocket. So he knows when to hit, when to pull the ripcord. And that's what Seabold has to learn. So the, the Peter Bedell published a story. Is it an outbound call from Wayne to Peter or Peter <coughs> into Wayne? I don't know, but I know I'm pretty certain Wayne has plenty of outbound calls to Peter. Yeah. Or right. put it this way, Peter rings... Peter's a very good Courier Mail journalist, and that was used to be Steve Ricketts. Whoever the main Courier Mail guy is, Wayne Bennett made sure he was on side with. Yep. That's smart business. Yep. The the uh, the other thing is, too, mm. that Wayne's last game, they're at home in a semi-final to the Dragons. Slaughtered. And just about had 50 put on them. Yep. So let's mm. have a bit of context, you know what I mean? Mm. All right, I, I have got one, uh, uh, Bambi. Here we go. Here but this go. is one everyone can't, hates. You can't resist. You can't resist. Can you? you know, I'm a uh, purveyor of Uber Eats. And <laughs> I I will accept it doesn't affect me that you rip 35% off restaurants and uh, you, but you're basically gouging them so they can use your service. Uh, so they're, they're using you at their detriment. But then for you, Uber Eats, to ask me if I want to support the restaurant with a $3 tip... And then support the driver. And then when I put not now on both, and then come back at me with a third request for a tip. You know what? You are the ones ripping off the customer. and But I, I happily pay, fine. But you ha- you're ripping off the restaurants, these poor small business people. How about you put up the $3? Okay, stop asking me. I'm paying you a delivery fee. How about you take it out of the delivery fee and you give it to the restaurants and keep them above water? Thank you. Sean and I had this discussion. We said, can you believe he's not doing a Bambi? And Sean said, look... You and I do one. He won't be able to help himself. Something will jump into his mind. Something will jump into my mind. What happens? (laughs) As per Sean's suggestion, it happened. Uh, And on my notes, the Catholic Church wanting JobKeeper. Well, uh, I'll I'll leave the Catholic Church alone. That's too big for this week. Well, you haven't, actually. But anyway, go on. Hey? You haven't. Oh, honestly, the richest organisation <laughs> in the world, and they're asking for job keeper. But the Catholic Church, of which I used to be a member of, has bigger problems. Oh. Let's do this. Just gone away to Riddell. Riddell will score. Now, what's he doing? A little bit of a dance. Mark Riddell. What about the gap? He's run out of the ground. He's standing there having his club of himself. By the ground. Drawn by, I, I would almost say rugby league royalty. <laughs> well, Certainly, try scoring celebration rugby league royalty. Well, Dan, most weeks we come in here and we're just straight up. You know, the microphones are set, off we go. It's yeah. been a whole Hollywood production. <laughs> no, for this, the man, great man, Mark Riddell. 
Good, g'day guys. How are we? Jolie, Dan, Matt. Lovely to have you. I mean, here's a man, Joel, that played what 190 odd NRL games. You won a Super League comp, yeah. and yet you're best known. For the try scoring celebrations. Now, does that piss you off or are you quite comfortable with that? Because <laughs> you actually had a bloody good well, career. Well, it's, it's funny you say that because I remember uh, talking with Sterlo, Peter Sterling, a, a while ago, and he said the same thing to me. He said, You had a you had a really good career, you know, it was a really solid career and yeah. plenty of footy, like you said with the footy games there, but Everyone, whenever they see you, they, all they want to talk about is the post-try celebration. So I don't mind it. I was about having fun and enjoying my footy. So um, I suppose that's what everyone remembers me for. Dan, this is a great lesson for the young players out there today. Yes. You show a bit of dash. Life's about a bit of dash. It's <laughs> a not bit about, of fun. But vanilla ice cream is a good seller at the ice cream shops, but it, no one loves vanilla ice cream. You know, you love the... The, those with flavours, right? This bloke showed plenty of flavour when he played the games. Now, he did that, and as a result, many years down the track, a big check goes his way to represent Sportsbet in Try July. So players who are playing now, get out there. Have a crack. Talk us through it, pig. Take, take us Mate, back a long that, time ago. Yeah, there was lot, more than one, wasn't there? There was oh, the famous oh, one there in was the stands. A, yeah, the, the stands was the was the big one. Yeah, uh, there was a couple of other ordinary ones, yeah. but um, premeditated or did it just happen? Were you flying through? And well, the story goes: uh, I was sitting in the grandstand, Wind Stadium. Um, I was sitting with a mate of mine, and he was playing in the lower grades. wasn't playing that night, and I mentioned it to him because it was the time when everyone, all the clubs were doing it. Origin teams were doing it. Oh, yeah. Two thousand uh, early. 2000. Two thousand, yeah. yeah. So um, I just said to him, I said, mate, I've got this idea. If I score a try, I'm going to run, jump the fence, <laughs> clap myself. I said, but it's got to be the right setting because, you know, you don't want to be down by 10 or 20. You don't want to be, you know, close game and you get beat. You've yeah. got to be winning uh, by a fair margin. That was it. Didn't, didn't think any more of it. And the other thing was is that I never scored tries where I actually had to run. Yeah. I I was always more, you know, a metre or two out and I'd try and barge over and that'd be it. So it just – it happened that night. It was like it was was meant to be. We were beating the Cowboys by, I don't know, 20 or 30 points late in the second half and I got an opportunity. I made a break by – with about – I think it was about 30 metres out and – for 29 yeah. of those metres, you're thinking, okay, come on, Well, fence. I wasn't actually. I was just trying to get to the try line <laughs> because, um, you know, obviously I wasn't the fastest, but I got there and then it just clicked. It, it just all sort of fell into fell into shape and uh, jumped the fence, clapped myself, and that was it. So, Dan, that's the law of attraction, right? So you've got to put it out there. He, he gets his try. They're leading by a heap, yeah. jumps the fence, claps. His... You know the greatest travesty out of all of that? Social media was not at its peak. No. Oh yeah, that would have gone. That would gone. <laughs> there was none wide. of that around. None of that around yeah. at the time. Early two thousands. Well, it's a great concept that we're trying to bring back here. Try July, but do you fear the coaches are going to scuttle this? Oh look, I, I think there may be a couple of coaches that won't be too keen on seeing their players probably doing those sorts of things, but. You have a look at it. You know, Blake Ferguson likes to do the backflip yes. when he scores a good try. Latrell Mitchell, Greg Inglis, they've got their little thing that they like to do after they score a try. Clint Gutherson from the Eels, he's doing the, the Gutherino or something yeah, that they yeah, call yeah. it after he scores every now oh, and then. Oh, the, the, the little dance thing. thing. Yeah. So um, you would like to think off the back of that that if one of those players that I've mentioned or someone else comes up with one this weekend that yeah. – that maybe you know everyone will get on board and get involved. Now here's why I'm guessing coaches didn't like, won't like it, or maybe even didn't like it. About, oh, because it inspires the opposition. You sort well, of. But but honestly, Joel, Mark, you played in that era. Were you ever offended when another when the team you were playing against did a try celebration? Uh, the uh. only time I saw a player <laughs> offended, we're playing Penrith, right, and we we paid the ultimate price. Hopper oh, I off the this. turnbuckles. He goes I remember off one this. pad, off the other pad, and then. Matty Adams wasn't really too happy. He went, bang, off you go, son. Knocked him yeah. off the, uh, I've got off a, the ropes. I've got a player who who's going to get this done, Yes, I, I reckon. Just based on seeing his social media, Brian Tottle. Oh, yes. okay. He's a front yes. runner. He's a big front right. runner. Right, okay. Like so $5,000, Piggy, to the men of well, league for each. Key. Well, And I think that's the key, isn't it? Yeah. That's, the, that's the big thing, that yeah. the players are going to be able to help the men of league foundation with everyone that they do. Yeah, $10,000. Yeah. The ones that are a bit more choreographed. Uh, What's that word? Choreographed. Sorry, choreographed. <laughs> choreographed. <laughs> choreographed. 
Uh, if you can say choreograph, you get ten thousand dollars of mental league as well. Um, yeah, they're the ones that you want. You know the the grenade, the ten pin bowling. Ten pin bowling. Yeah. Well, you'd like to think even the team ones would attract a good. You know, because you're getting everyone on board there, yeah. like a few blokes involved in it, then that'd be quality from everyone. Do you remember the great Troy Wozniak at all? Yes, I do. Last game yeah. of the year we played the Warriors. He scores the greatest try he'll ever score. Yes. 75 metres off he goes. So to which point we all come together for a team photo. Tony Green, the trainer, grabs the football, <laughs> yes. gets us all in. He's that calling us all in, bang. And I think it was... Wasn't hit, the Warriors player? Henry Farfield. <laughs> in the background, the old... <laughs> Photo bombing it. <laughs> Perfection. That, that made it, that one, didn't it? That made, made it. Made it yeah. th- that he, he got on board with it as well. Why did it end? It was such an innocent concept. Mm. Why did it ever end? Well, it's back. It was a big footy show yeah. thing, but it is back. Yeah. And it is for charity. Mm. Uh, so if you don't get involved in try celebrations then you're not being part of this so it's what 5,000 for men of league come on come on we can all it's a COVID year anything it doesn't matter in 2020 just have a bit of fun speaking a bit of fun how have you enjoyed post-career life uh, yeah, I've enjoyed it a lot. I've been pretty lucky, I suppose. I think, you know, a lot of players, when they finish their career, would like to go into the media, and that's yeah. sort of what I did. I did a little bit of coaching with some with some junior sides, but, um, you know, I got an opportunity. Actually, I got an opportunity off the back of Joel Kane. It was it's oh, a funny you, football football you, you can actually tell yeah. the story. In the yeah. Sydney Football Stadium, and Piggy Riddell is down there with a Roosters polo thing on. Mm-hmm. And he's down to the left. And I said to the boys in the box, I said, I reckon Piggy's worth a cracky. I, I, so I waltzed down. I remember yeah. where I was. went through the seats. I said, mate. And you said, yeah, I'm keen. And next thing you know, you've been there for how long? Well, been there nine years, Two I think, now. Yeah, since 2012. So yeah. nine season. Long. Yeah. Doesn't time fly. Yeah. April 2012 it was. Wow. I remember when I first started the Saturday night sideline yeah. with yourself and, and Mark Levy. There so. you go. Eye for talent, Dan. I know. <laughs> right. I know the big well done. <laughs> but it's been good. You know, I obviously got an opportunity to do the radio and yeah. the brekkie show and... Um, back to just doing the the uh, the footy now, so it's it's really good. Dan, also a disciple of the sugar try scorer bingo. Yes, yes, I do like it. Except you didn't go on it this week. Well, I actually forgot about it <sighs> last week. I always put a lot of my bets on on Thursday yeah. afternoon. You know, getting yeah, ready for yeah, Thursday yeah. night footy. Uh, can I tell you, I'm exactly the same. <laughs> I looked at his try scores and I thought, I think this is a because I normally can pick holes through his bingo, right. <laughs> but this time I thought. Oh, he's got a bloody yeah. chance. Well, I, yeah. I didn't look at it until Friday afternoon. I got to the studio and a couple of the boys, we all had a look at it and we went, oh, no. Yeah. I went, oh, no, we're, oh, I've, I've missed out this yeah. week. So I'll be back on board. What Good about boy. Sugar Weekend Bingo, yep. where it's only the five games that are left? Because if, if the original bingo dies in the arse on the yeah. third, or we all forget. Re- Repper Charge Bingo. Repper Charge <laughs> Weekend. Weekend Bingo. Because, weekend bingo. Well, I don't know how you guys bet, but I bet if, if I have a – any time try scorer, yeah. you know, similar yes. like the, the yes. bingo. And I get out second leg or third leg, I reload and, yeah. and go for the weekend. That's why the bingo is good, though. You've got a couple of strikes in you, haven't you? Yes. You know, you're yeah. not going like after it. Thursday That's night. Right. Oh, yeah, you're not going. Yeah, because you're five out of eight. So even yeah. when you get to the Saturday, oh, well, forget my yeah. ideas. Forget, <laughs> forget, forget I even said anything. Mark Riddell, yes. it's been an absolute pleasure, mate. Come back any time. We went through a month, and we might have to go through it again now that Victoria's broken yeah. out. New South Wales, by the way, I do fear that we're going to have a breakout soon. Yeah, oh, we, really? we, we can't get too complacent. Exactly. We're, 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 we're laughing at the AFL down there. I'm telling you that Schadenfreude's going to kill us <laughs> because all it takes is one, one. one mm. community yep. to not get tested, and we're going to be the same, and we might have another month. Yep. Let's get Mark for a proper... A proper interview. Absolutely. Uh, Mark Piggy Riddell, there's about 200 tries forecasted for try July. Any parting words for the players out there? Well, I, all I would say is, boys, it's for a great cause. 5000 for every try celebration. Get on board with sports bet and let's make plenty of money for the Men of League. Footy is back. Yeah, that's worth a round of applause. Even the crowds are getting a look in. So to celebrate, Sportsman is asking every NRL try scorer to celebrate with Try July. Oh, that's the spirit. Throw that in. If you're brave, ooh, very nice. For every try celebration in July, Sportsbet will donate 5K to the Men of League Foundation. We'll make it 10K if it's a doozy. Try July from Sportsbet. All right. Now, 
Finally, what this podcast is all about. It'd be nice if these blokes actually gave me a rap. Two years you've hung shit on me for, get, for being a terrible tipster. You're flying. Now I'm flying. Yeah. Don't hear a thing. Anyway, let's go. <laughs> Melbourne. I, I don't have the scores, by the way, but um, I went 6-2 and two last week. I think we all did pretty well, didn't no, we? No, not me. Really? No, I had a shocker. Oh, I'm too, sorry. Too you did, Dan. We're propping up, We're propping up the leaderboard. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I, I honestly thought you did all right no, last week. No, I had a shocker. I had an absolute oh, yeah, you shocker. Did. No, Sean got five. You got one, two, three. You got six as well, Sean. Yeah. There yeah. you go. You sound surprised, Dan. Because you two just said you didn't. You, you did terrible. You did, but I mean, do, do you know what? On our, on our uh, get them on side Fox show, Sean tipped Gold Coast off the bat. Yeah, good off tip. the bat. Good tip. I like that. North Queensland off the bat. I was. I sent you blokes a text saying I'm watching footage. They are asleep. <laughs> While Paul Green's talking to them, they're going to get lapped. And that was very strange, though, that, that footage. But they sat there with the, the no pen and paper out. Well, very, let me tell you. So Fox didn't come on air until 2.30. Well, that stuff was happening at 2. So they only used on Fox uh, at 2.30, I don't know, 30 seconds of it. That stuff mm. went for 10, 15 minutes. Wow. And blokes were falling asleep. And I'm thinking, well, they, they, they just don't care anymore. <laughs> well, they, they didn't care to the tune of leading 26-0 at half time. Um, let's get straight into it, shall we? Yeah, let's rock Any and roll. Any specials we need to mention first? Uh, just the sugar try score bingo. So we're up again, $9. I've got a few longer shots in. At one last week, we had it put to bed by Saturday. So the punters are loving it every single week. All done. More and more people are jumping on board. Sugar bingo. Does that come out of your paycheck? Sure. Yeah. How much did it pay? We got took to the cleaners, all right, and it's and you'll find the market in the storm versus Roosters clash. Uh, there you go. Have you? Have you? Uh, are you? Are you being killed again on that four up? Are you still doing four up? Yeah. Or? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Uh, Thursday and Friday games. Mate, you're getting destroyed on yeah. that. All right. Uh, we teased it long enough. Let's go. Melbourne Sydney Roosters. That is our Thursday. This is a good Thursday night game at Suncorp. As this weird season continues, Melbourne have an unbelievable record at Suncorp. They've won 12 of their last 13. Roosters have won three of their last 17, I think it is, at Suncorp. Wow, An atrocious record. Um, but obviously, it's a neutral and there's no Cam Munster. 285 Melbourne, $1.43 Roosters. The start, oh, here we go. Here's, Sean, it's <laughs> minus six. Which way are we going here? I've got a funny feeling this is going to... Uh, continue to creep up. So, so let's. Are we going to do minus six point five? Okay, minus yep. six point yep. five. Roosters, welcome back to Desco and Josh Morris. Yeah, I'll take the Roosters here, Dan. I I, I just got a feeling that you know the Dragons pushed them last week. I I got a feeling Sean the Trader is going to go the Melbourne Storm because he's been a bit sceptical of the Roosters' uh, performances. Uh, the Wombat game fifty for the Wombat. Yep. I will tell you something. If you're playing in the try scorer markets here. On their left side, so the Storm's left side, they've conceded only two tries all year. Yes. Roosters on their left side have not conceded a single try all year on their left edges there. So, look, if you're looking for a try scorer, you're looking on the left-hand yeah, side of your team. Don't go Momorowski or Josh Morris. That's it. So you're looking for, you know, Daniel Tupo or you're looking for the Fox on the other side versus uh, Vinavalu. I'll take the Roosters um, a, a little reluctantly. Cracking game. Uh, no, Sean, I'm... Yeah, I'm not reluctant at all. I'm I'm big on the Roosters with you. I'm actually surprised. Well, no, it's probably not surprising because I have been a little bit somewhat dubious of the of the Roosters in the last few weeks. And boy, I've got that wrong. Um, but I'm 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 really keen on them here. Cameron Munster is a huge, massive out um, for the Melbourne Storm. Roosters have their own issues as well with um, with uh, Radley and Verrills going down. Mm. But I think they can cover them um, much. Much more, or much better than the than the storm can 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 cover Munster. So, I think this is going to continue to cre- creep up. Um, I think it's probably closer to double figures this one, which is surprising. I don't think the storm would have gone off this price in a in a non sort of Origin affected game for for almost ten years. I would have thought, um, but Roosters pretty confident for me. I just don't see where the storm get their points. So the uh, Roosters are only conceding nine point nine a game, which is one of the great defensive stats of the modern era if it continues do we think Jackson Hughes will be the halves I suspect Cam Smith will go into halfback pretty early Brandon Smith will be the hooker uh, or maybe Cooper Johns makes his first grade debut he's been named at number 18 I just don't know if a Jacks Hughes combination provides Melbourne with much spark they look good didn't they with um, Cameron Smith at halfback Brandon Smith at dummy half the Tigers fans would be loving that uh, exactly. I'll tell you what I'd, I'd be considering 
if I'm Tigers and Melbourne, and they've shown they don't mind loaning players, I would strongly consider, if I was the Tigers, lending this Melbourne Storm, Benji Marshall, for a short period of time for two reasons. Benji's defence needs some work. Melbourne yep. Storm are terrific at that. It would light the fire for Benji, um, and it would do Melbourne Storm wonderful things. Not too dissimilar signing. Uh, Cam Newton signs with all yeah. teams. The Patriots, yeah. the flamboyant Cam Newton. It would be the same thing, the flamboyant Benji Marshall going to the very systemised like, Melbourne Storm. Like where your head's at. Yeah. Canberra St. George Illawarra is... So going, what are you doing, Dan? You're I said I'm going with the Roosters. Roosters I, well. I can't see Melbourne cracking yeah. double figures. And I, I tell you this, though. I think the Roosters are due for a bad game soon. I just don't think it'll be this one. Canberra St. George Illawarra. Raiders $1.24. Jeez, that's short. Uh, St. George Illawarra, who are starting to well, put it together a little. $4.10. No, finally, Ricky Stewart's had enough of Curtis Scott's defensive uh, yep. liability. So Michael Oldfield goes into the number four position. Joey Tarpany is back. Dragons, well, all of a sudden they have a pretty settled team. Remember for years the Dragons could not win in Canberra. Well, they sort of smashed that um, a few years ago. So um, they don't play at Canberra Stadium often. Nice that Canberra Stadium actually gets a game. That might be a factor, but the line is a very big ten and a half. Shorty boy. Yeah, it is. It is a very big line, and the, that scoreline for the for the Raiders last week is uh, very flattering. Obviously, the two late tries there, and the the, the Dragons. Like, if you're not going to get much better chances to to um, beat a team like the Roosters with the way everything went against them, and they still couldn't really get close to them. So, the Raiders, they just aren't. I still think they're a, they're probably a top four team, but they're just not going any good at the moment. So. Um, with that in mind, a couple of outs for Parner and, and the big angry uh, redhead, Corey Horsburgh. He had a weekend last weekend, didn't he? <laughs> um, I, I've got to take I've got to take the points. So um, Dragons plus for me. Yeah, I'm on the same train here. And, and, and Sean's words last week make me think about this, that, you know, not that they're a bad team, but Sean says if a bad team's giving away a big start, you can't, you can't take them. They're not a bad team, but they are yeah. out of sorts. Um, so I'll go that. And, and well done to the punters last week. We said get on Jennings, get on Sevo on the left hand yeah. side for Parramatta. Both scored. Dragons for me, but zero confidence. Jennings was gone a year and a half ago. It's yeah. amazing his resurrection. Mm. I'm going to make it a, a trifecta. St. George Laura for me too. I think this is they sort of got their their best unit out there with Ben Hunt off the bench and McInnes going into the back row uh, when Hunt comes in. So yeah, give me the points as well. We get to the late Friday game. Parramatta North Queensland. Uh, $1.35 the Eels. Now, these prices are on on Wednesday, so they are going to change. Uh, and North Queensland coming off that big win last week, although they did almost let it slip against Newcastle. $3.20. Um, no Mitchell Moses for Parramatta. The line is an even eight points. It's going to go one way or the other. It's a Dylan brown Jai field combination. I'll go first on this one. I called North Queensland last week. I don't think they can back that up, but I think they can keep this within eight. Um, Parramatta, uh, I think they're due. They've had a big month, and that was another emotional result on Saturday night. I think they'll win, but I think it's going to be very close. Yeah, I sent out a tweet about six weeks ago saying, where's Jay Field? I just felt like this rule change suits the touch footballers. Kalen Ponga loves playing it. Sean Johnson's the number one try assist merchant at the moment. I think Jay Field will love these conditions. Whether he plays fullback and Gutho goes in the halves, I don't know. But either way, I love having him in the team. I've got the line set at about nine and a half, so I've got Parramatta to cover it. I'm not sold on the Cowboys just yet, and I'm happy to go with the Eels. Uh, we'll get the first look at the new surface of Bank West in this game as well. So they're dropping in a new field oh, uh, no. as well. This uh, never works. Sure. This is gonna. It never works <laughs> when they lay new. Here's my. Here's a Bambi. Sorry, a mid tip Bambi. How is it that we have not worked out in Sydney what rye, what grass to use in winter? <laughs> Just because something is called winter rye doesn't mean that's good for football. How is it that in the last 15, 20 years and this obsession with beautiful lush green surfaces for television, but we're stuffing up the product yeah. because it's holding in all the dew and now it cuts up. The dew's the thing, as you say, Grounds Dan. never cut up the way they do now because they're kept lush and they and they're not cut as tight. You know the the, the new stadium in um, Las Vegas. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what they can do with that stadium? It's the same thing. In, yeah, they took the Arizona method where they pull they pull it out <laughs> on a hundred meter tray. This is my idea for ANZ Stadium. Yeah. Because not not all the stadium gets the sunlight, 
but you, you you put it on a you hit a button and it comes out on it comes out on a trolley to, to get the sun beaming to get on the it the full sun unbelievable anyway Shawnee boy <laughs> mid tip Bambi I like that that's got legs I think um, and yeah well what are the the cross merchants going to say when someone does a knee on the on the new turf they're going to have nothing to, to to whinge about but um Moses is a huge out for Para obviously that's a it goes without saying I just think um. We're going to go seven and a half for this for this line as well. There's already a bit of juice in the in the plus eight. So I think it's going to jump plus seven and a half or Ugh. maybe lower. Never goes um, my way those little. <laughs> anyway, go on. No, go um, on. We know the cow- the Cowboys have to turn this game into a into a bit of a high scoring affair um, to get anywhere near. They've got plenty of points in them, but they also leak plenty of points. I just think with Moses out, the number looks a little bit too big for me. So I'll back the, the Cowboys all plus, right. please. Okay. Hey, the Gunslinger and, and SM Masters, they're having all sorts. There's plenty of tries around those two. There is plenty of tries. Gunslinger's on the left-hand side. Fergo gets his first try this week, boys. Joel, I've tried to take, have that name take off. I do know... I, I somehow get North Queensland every week, right, on Fox. Mm. And I try the Gunslinger. Has it, it, landed? it just hasn't landed, mate. Have you done it for he's a He's only thrown one. You know, he's only actually thrown one intercept yeah. that has hit the mark. He throws plenty which are knocked down, yeah. but they, they just don't stick. It'll so stick. I'll try it again. Yeah, we'll All right, just for the you. Kern, the Colonel knocked on a thousand doors before KFC stuck. So just keep <laughs> just keep turning up for the gunslinger. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Saturday afternoon and again. Hey, I might not heard that one before, Joel. <laughs> I've got to give the NRL oh, a rag um, because, uh, you know, there's some matches we've we've commented how many Saturday night games should be on free to wear. I mean, it's great for my employer, but I'll tell you what they get right: the Saturday 3 p.m. game, and nothing says Saturday 3 p.m. like Gold Coast at home to Cronulla, uh, <laughs> albeit both last start winners, um, and the Sharks actually look like they're starting to get it together. Gold Coast two dollar sixty four, Cronulla dollar forty nine, and again uh, the pff, even six the start. Which way are we going here? Uh, Sean? Uh, let's go five and a half. Why do we have to change? Why can't we just go with minus six? <laughs> For job. No, because we can't have pushes, Dan. We, yeah. we need yes, a result. We we need to be, needs to be out of bait. Flat no Stanley. one likes push. Yeah, flat okay. Stanley over here. So which way are we going, Sean? Five and a half. Okay. Plus five and a half. This is a skilled stadium or, or Rabina. Seabus. I, I never forget what, it, uh, never remember what it's called. Biggest over run of, of the weekend, 44 and a half. Saturday afternoon, mm. five and a half the start, uh, uh, Joel Kane. Yeah, I'll take the, the sage counsel of uh, rugby league philosopher Tin Man from Marrickville. Yes. He says, uh, <laughs> he says, I think the Titans are a good bet this week. Market overreacted for the Sharks being a depleted, beating a depleted manly side who played terrible. Worst game I've seen DCE play. <laughs> They're a try fave on the road for the Sharks. I wouldn't back that with stolen money. Well, you know what, Tin Men from Marrickville, neither would I. I, I think Justin wow. Holbrook is a very, very good coach. I like what John Morris is doing, by the way, but I've only got the line set at two and a half. Okay. What did you say it's at? Near, near six. Five and a half. Near five and a half. Uh, Titans for me every day, baby. Um, I don't. Well, firstly, let me preface this by saying I hate this game from a betting perspective. Um, two pretty bad teams, but. Uh, Tyrone Peachy playing centres. We at the start of the year he's had some real, real issues in defence, um, and I think that might cause some headaches for the Titans. So with no confidence, but I'm going to lean the way of the Sharkies. Just be careful with your first try scorer bets. Nene McDonald has been named at 21. Yeah, but he he's not going to take Katara out or or also Bryson Could be good Goodwin. One. Nah, you don't think? No, nah, he's he's scored two tries in two games. I tell you what, Bryson Goodwin is. He's, I mean, he's solid. Solid. Yeah. Like, and literally solid. Yeah, you, yeah. You can't, he's got like an anchor. You can't push him out. I'm a believer in Cronulla for games like this. I think they're a bit better than Gold Coast. When I'm confused, and we're all a bit confused by this one, I just go for who's the better team. That, that list is better than the Gold Coast list, so give me Cronulla. At home ground, zero, um, has zero pull. Which way are you going, Sean? He's a Sharky. I'm, yeah, I'm Sharkies. All right, very good. 5.30. Oh, how do you pick this game? Warriors, Broncos, Gosford. Uh, Warriors two dollars sixty. Broncos a dollar fifty. Uh, David Fusatua back for the Warriors, but Roger Chiuvasashek lost uh, that uh, judiciary case. Fair income. Um, so Brisbane welcome back Carrigan and Flegler, but still no David Fafita. Um, and there's still a few out there, but they are the warm favourites minus four point five. Joel Kane. So Jack Hetherington, Pwasa Pharmacilli's gone back to the Roosters. Jack Hetherington is the new lone player for the Warriors. 
And he'll also captain this week, Dan. So, <laughs> can we have a mark at when, at what minute, over under will he be uh, reported by the referee? Oh. I'd put forty-eight and a half minutes as the oh, over under. Say forty-eight and a half seconds. Uh, he, he does love that. Like, look, you can't. Sorry, I uh, know oh five and a half. Uh, that is still the line. Dear Broncos, just play field position. You start the set in the Warriors' half. You score tries. I do love Fusatua and Mamalo being on the wing. Mamalo's a great player. He's a really, really good player. Great's a strong uh, word. He's, I'll tell you now, in the right club, he's one of the best wingers in the competition, okay. Mamalo. Eli Katoa's still not playing. That's a big out. Gee, mate, hang on. Ken Mamalo made some defensive blunders. Yeah, I get all that. But in the right club... <laughs> they conceded 50. If he was at the Melbourne Storm, he would be a superhero of this competition. Mate, he's if I was at player. the Melbourne Storm, <laughs> I could almost win a comp. <laughs> Look... Simply said, you have to be on the Broncos. You, ha- you have to be on the Broncos. Okay. Minus five and a half. I'm not going to argue with you, Joel, because I agree. Sean? Yeah, I'm with both of you. I, I said it's one of my sort of golden rules and never never back bad teams at a, at a minus, but you can do that when the minus is wrong, and I think this is um, far too skinny. If the Broncos get beat here against a, a Warriors team without two of us a check, then he Seabolt has to go. That's the there's no two ways about it. But I think they're going to do this pretty comfortably. I'm stunned the line is so small, and I reckon that'll blow out. I bet it gets to about seven and a half by the time we kick off. People yeah. probably the two of us a check news didn't even move the the market. Uh, mm. I was at that game at um, on Friday night. I didn't think Melbourne were that good. And they won 50 to 6. They weren't. They weren't that good, Dan. And, and they actually had a chance in the first 20 minutes, the Warriors. They had yeah. a worry, didn't they? Yep. Yeah. Um, but just go through the form line. If you in horse parlance, so to speak, Broncos played Parramatta since COVID. How are they travelling? Parramatta. Good. Yes. They played the Roosters. Good. They played Manly, who's a very good side and were healthy at the time. And they played the Newcastle Knights, who are a very good side. Um, Gold Coast, they were poor last week, right? But this is a big, big step back in class. Yes. For a team who should be very motivated. Very, very motivated. Yeah. I don't think their draw is the reason why they've lost five in a row. But I know what you say. I know what you say. Yes, they've gone from a a Cox Plate to a a Hawkesbury Class (laughs) 6. West Tigers Penrith is the 7.30 Saturday night game at Campbelltown. So this hasn't been moved. I thought this might have been moved to... Leichhardt, but Campbelltown... Have I got this right? It is at Campbelltown? No, it's Bank West. Uh, Bank, Bank West. West. Sorry, yes, because yeah. Campbelltown's out of business. So, yeah. Sorry, everyone. Um, and Tigers, uh, what did they do last week? Oh, they had a great win over Canterbury. They were never, ever going to lose that game. Penrith, welcome back. Josh Mansour, they had it easy. Well, easy. They were very good against South on that Thursday night, particularly Nathan Cleary. Um, this is a good contest. The line, four and a half. 260-150. Last time they met was Magic Ground last year. The Tigers absolutely smashed them. Aside from that, Penrith have a good record over the Tigers. Four and a half. Small, isn't mm. it? Yeah, I, I, I haven't been with Penrith at all this year, but um, numbers are numbers, and I've, I've got to go with them this week. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez, that's, numbers a, are numbers. that's concise. Yeah. Sean? <laughs> numbers are numbers. Can we cut that out? That can be the little preview for the show. That's good. Um, I don't know if Penrith were that good last week. Like the... the South's first half was deplorable. I was on bunnies. He just knew straight away the way they were dropping ball. They were just really never going to be in it. But if Jimmy the Jet catches that intercept in the second half, it could be a a very different game. They're on top um, early in the second half there. So it's a very, very tricky game um, betting-wise. But um, at night, I think it it might be relatively low scoring. So I'm just going to lean the way of points. So West plus for me. Okay. It is dewy, so maybe that'll have a factor. Right. Sunday afternoon, this this would have been a great game had uh, players been at full strength. Uh, Newcastle looking pretty good here. Their favourites at Brookie. They've won three games at Brookie ever. Ever. Yep. But they're $1.77 against a manly side. We know all the players they're missing. Tom Travojevic, uh, Dylan Walker amongst them. But Moses Suley comes back, so slightly improved there. Um 1.5 is the start. If you want Newcastle away from home, you've got to give up a point and a half. Sean, I'm going to let you go first here. Yeah, I think if you if you, if you you like Newcastle here, like I think me and Shug uh, both do, I reckon you'd want to back them early. I think this one is going to jump significantly shorter than what they are now. Um, we both sent a, a text at almost the exact same time saying this line looks very, very uh, skinny. Um Granted, I think it was like a dollar eighty-five a couple of days ago, but I, I thought this game might have been on the Central Coast. Moved to Brookie, I don't think it makes that much of a difference. 
um, with the lack of crowd influence and also Tommy Turbo, he's huge. He could be the, the biggest impact to a, to a team when he's out. Um, so get on get on early to, early, early to Aussie. I think it's going to jump maybe four, four and a half this one. So Knights for me. Okay. Yeah. Knights, Dan, if this was my mic, I'd drop the mic. <laughs> Knights are the best bet of the year. Oh, that Brookie. Best bet of the year. Wow. That's best a, bet of the oh. year. Last year, Is they... Andrew Gray their uh, fitness <laughs> trainer now? <laughs> no. Uh, no. They, uh, Balan Couples is actually, <laughs> who's, who's, who's a very, very good trainer as well. In fact, they may have been the uh, fittest coming back as well. Best bet of the year, Newcastle Knights. They're coming off a loss. Uh, they were horrible last week. Yeah, That's they won't okay. be that bad again. Yeah, a big trip up to North Queensland, no crowd, all that sort of stuff. I- I'm okay with that. This is the best bet of the year. Uh, they're taking on a team without Turbo, without Walker. They cope without um, Turbo last year, but they had Happy Coruscant and they had Manasi Finu at that time, right? Yes. So now it's all on Daily Cherry Evans. Yes. It is all on Daily Cherry Evans. Brad Mabess comes back for the Newcastle Knights. Yes. They're just too good. Like, you look at the teams, there's not a heap that separates them man for man. However, Kalen Ponga versus Ruben Garrick. No further questions, Your Honour. This is just a... Mm. They cover the line. I suggested to my punters club, I said, boys, whatever the balance is, put the whole balance on the Knights at the minus. Jeez. Which is not happening because there's always one whinger who won't have a crack. <laughs> Hello to you, Tapes. Um, but I just think they're the better of the year. Finally, oh, me too. Newcastle 1.5. I don't know about better of the year, but I like them as well. Canterbury South rounds us out Sunday night football. Uh, geez, another Bankwest game. So that's three Bankwest games. God, we are overdoing it. $4 dogs, South $1.25. Oh, Canterbury, I saw them last week. I may have had an all-up depending on them to <laughs> perform, and they did not. So I might be dirty on them, but... Meany Montoya and Christian Crichton is back in, are back in for the dogs, but they're missing Will Hopawati. Jake Avarillo, I hope he hasn't been dropped. He's been pretty good. No, um, he's injured, Dan. I was going to say, yeah. you're not going to drop him for Mont- Montoya. South, as per pro, well, as the same team as last week, James Roberts is in there. Uh, 11 and a half. Gee, it's a big, big line. Big line. Yeah. I might listen to the dog lover first. No, I'm not the dog lover this week. I think purely on on numbers or ratings, as we talk about a fair bit, I, I can't get it too big, this line. But we know South, they beat up on bad teams. We've got um, Marcelo Monta- Montoya coming back into the dogs team at centre. He couldn't tackle a fish supper. So uh, South's uh, minus for me. I think they're going to do it pretty easily. Yeah, I, I tend to agree. Um, they lap the Gold Coast. It feels like a similar sort of thing. The big outside backs have a bit of a field day. No, no last week I loved the fact that you had Dallin on the wing and you had Remus on the wing. Those two big wingers are now not there on that wing position. I'm South, but I don't love the game. No, I won't be having a cent on it, which is not what you should do in a sports uh, bet podcast, but uh, South Sydney for me as well. All right, that's it, everyone. We're done. Geez, that was an action-packed Piggy Riddell, yeah. Bambies, Tips, Sean in Melbourne. Richard Reid over here. <laughs> the flamboyant Richard Reid from Mexico. Yeah. yeah. Mid, oh, honestly, mid Sean, Bambies as well, you yeah. do look like you should be at a, at a rally. Look at you, the white T-shirt, the slick back hair, <laughs> the, the coif beard. I mean, you really are. You are just so Melbourne. <laughs> uh, I'll take it as a compliment. Thanks, mate. All right. Goodbye. Goodbye to you, Sean. Goodbye, Joel. Gamble responsibly, Cheers, folks. Boys. Catch you next week.